everyone, my name's Danny, and I just want to start off by saying a massive thank you to Keith Picard, who is the person that sorted out doing this reading uh, and brought everyone together that will be reading today. Um, so I'm one of the authors of Does It Far, along with Nick Caruso, who you'll be hearing from at some point, uh, and um, I'm going to start off by um, reading the introduction to Does It Far. Um, to, so to start off, a little bit of background on how the book came about. Um, so myself and Nick, we're scientists that are pretty active on Twitter. Both of us are ecologists slash zoologists. And um, we use Twitter to talk about our work um, and engage with other scientists. We're part of quite a big community on Twitter of ecologists. Um, and we use this for things like sharing our work with others, building collaborations, and sharing information and doing a lot of science communication. Um, well, one fateful day, um, my brother turned to me and he said, Danny, do snakes fart? And I said, honestly, I don't really know. Uh, I don't study snakes. I study African wild dogs. But I did know someone who would know the answer. David Steen, snake fart expert. So uh, I messaged David. I was like, David, do snakes fart? And it turns out he gets this question quite a lot. So he responded, sigh, yes. And from there, Science Twitter did its magic. Nick suggested that we turned it into a hashtag and in the true nature of science, we then converted it into a spreadsheet. From there, it kind of took off. It was covered by journalists. Um, in the midst of all that, our publishers wrote to us and they said, hey guys, do you, do you want to turn this into a book? And we said, yeah, of course. That would be amazing. And so does it part of the book was born. So when we started out writing the book, we first had to kind of come up with what is a fart? Because it, it might seem obvious, but when you think about it and you're trying to work out if an animal farts or not, it's, it does, it's not as obvious as it seems at first glance. So the medical um, term for a fart is flatulence. Um, and that's defined as flatus expelled from the anus. Now, flatus is quite strictly defined um, as gas produced during digestion, um, generally in the stomach or in the gut. Um, and through this book, myself and Nick were taking part in flotology, that is, the study of flatulence, um, even though that's not really our main area of expertise. The word fart actually predates the term flatulence um, and it was used specifically to mean breaking wind loudly. Uh, however, today the term fart is used much more broadly than that. Um, a lot of the air that we fart out is swallowed. Um, it's generally used for any kind of gas being expelled from the opposite end of an animal to its mouth, whether that's an anus, um, a cloaca, which is a multi-purpose hole that many animals, such as reptiles and birds, have, or, you know, some animals even have a special duct. Um, and also, a fart can be loud or it can be silent but deadly. So some of the farts found in this book might not fit the strict medical definition of flatulence, but most people would probably consider them to be a fart. Um, so that was you know, the definition we use in the book, any gas that's expelled from the opposite end of an animal to its mouth. Not all farts are created equal, and the smell and frequency of flatus can vary based on an organism's diet, health, and gut flora. Vegetables and other foods that are high in fibre, such as broccoli, beans, or peas, dairy products which contain lactose, um, foods that are high in starch or fructose and many others can um, all um, link with the smell or the frequency of farts in humans um, and likely in other animals too, although studies in this department are sadly lacking. We all know the song, beans, beans, good for your heart, the more you eat, the more you fart. Uh, or I think in America it's beans, beans, the magical fruit, the more you eat, the more you toot. Um, and that's because beans are pretty hard to digest. Um, any food that's harder to digest for any particular reason stays in your gut longer, more gases are produced, um, which 
leads to an increase in farting. While many farts are odourless, um, containing primarily carbon dioxide, food containing higher concentrations of sulphur, uh, for example meat or Brussels sprouts, um, can lead to the creation of sulphur dioxide, which is the compound that causes that traditional eggy smell that will often catch a whiff off when someone's breaking wind. Um, on the other hand, also um, our health can affect it, parasitic infections, other intestinal illnesses, or um, dietary issues um, can also lead to increases in fart frequency or malodor, that is a bad smell. Um, some individuals might just have um, more room and more um, gut bacteria and other microorganisms, these are collectively generally known as gut flora, um, and people who have more of that will produce more farts. I'll be passing over to Lachlan Fetterplace, who will be reading one of my favourite entries in this book, The Herring. 